Carpe Diem VPN. Seize the network. Before we can help Cletus build his new SD-WAN, we need to figure it out for ourselves. Let's start by talking about the Zero Trust whitelist-only model that Cisco SD-WAN with Intella uses to establish a secure fabric. What I mean by Zero Trust is that every device in the Viptela fabric cross-authenticates every other piece before building connections to them. We control this by a combination of the organization, the device whitelist, and digital certificates. Each part of the SD-WAN solution uses the Zero Trust model in a slightly different way, but the administration starts here with the vManage. The vManage is our command and control piece of the fabric architecture. It's where we add, remove, change, and monitor the secure SD-WAN fabric. We're going to spend most of the time in our video focused on how vManage helps administrate the Zero Trust model, like the organization, the whitelist, and the certificates. Let's look at the organization first. Now here we can see that the organization name is carpe.dmvpn.com and the organization is an identifier used to make sure all devices belong to the same fabric. The organization is configured on every SD-WAN device and it's also part of the digital certificates needed to do cross-authentication. Besides looking at the organization configured in vManage, we can also look at the CLI of one of the devices and to see what it looks like as part of the configuration. Here we can see that vSmart is configured with the organization name. Don't worry too much about the SP organization name. That comes in when we're talking about multi-tenant deployments. If there is no multi-tenancy, the organization name is all that matters. Well, that takes care of the organization. Let's move on to the device whitelist. When the SD-WAN fabric is provisioned, the vManage has to be aware of all the devices that will be participating. That means controllers as well as the WAN Edge routers. For the controllers, this is a pretty simple process. There's no actual whitelist needed. We just need to ensure that they belong to the same organization as vManage, that the certificates are trusted, and then we can use vManage to onboard them directly. Let's look at the WAN Edge routers. For WAN Edge routers, the whitelist is very important. As part of the process of deploying an SD-WAN fabric, a provisioning file, which includes the serial numbers and models of the WAN Edge routers, needs to be installed on vManage. If this is a cloud deployment through Cisco, this should be taken care of by Cisco Cloud Ops. If we're running an on-prem or a lab deployment, the provisioning file needs to be pulled down from Cisco's plug-and-play portal and uploaded to vManage. In this particular setup, there's no physical equipment listed because this is my lab. But based on the devices attached to my organization, I download a whitelist provisioning file, upload it to vManage, and this tells the vManage what devices to allow onto the fabric. And then vManage will send this list to the vBond and the vSmarts. So now that vManage has a list of allowed devices and organization, the next piece that must match are digital certificates. In this video, I'm not going to dig very far into what a digital certificate is. There's a lot of better resources out there to learn about them than I can do in this short video. I'll be focusing on why they're important and how they're used to authenticate and secure the SD-WAN fabric. As far as Viptela is concerned, the main thing to remember is that all devices must share a trusted root certificate authority, and that CA must issue digital certificates for each device. Let's look at that briefly in Settings and Certificates.
Now the certificate signing and install process is different based on whether the CERT authority is a well-known CA such as DigiCERT, which is preloaded as a root CA, or if an enterprise root CA is being used. In a future video, we can discuss the differences and how each is configured, but for now, let's focus on what information must exist within the certificate itself. The certificate must include an organization which matches the organization configured in vManage. For physical gear, the serial, which is used in the canonical name field, will be based on the tamper-proof module in the case of vEdge and the SUDI chip in the case of an iOS XE router. This ensures the integrity of the physical device and that it belongs to your organization. Let's look at a certificate and see what it looks like in CLI. There are some important details in our certificate. First of all, you can see that canonical name for the issuer is the root CAV manage workstation. In my lab, this is just a Linux box that I've set up to perform the dual function of being the admin workstation, that's actually what we're on right now, and also performing the function of an enterprise root certificate authority. Down under the subject, you can see that the certificate was issued to the Viptela vManage. Under CN, you can see the vManage and the software uh, chassis ID. Notice that the OU also says carpe-dmvpn.com. So, as you can see, the certificate organization must match the organization configured as part of the fabric, and the canonical name is what we are going to use to identify the device itself. For virtual devices, such as a CSR or vEdge Cloud, the vManage provisioning file, or whitelist, will include a chassis ID and one time token for onboarding. The virtual device can match this for onboarding purposes, after which a permanent serial number will be issued by vManage. Let's jump over and take a look, since we're using all virtual gear in our lab. Here you can see a big difference between the devices which I have onboarded and the devices which are provisioned but not yet onboarded and not created. Notice that the chassis number is issued as part of the provisioning file and the token is also issued as part of the provisioning file. Now again, the token is just a placeholder. We actually can set this on the device we want to onboard, the virtual device, since it lacks a TPM or SUDI chip. And then when it connects to the vBond, as long as the chassis ID and serial number match, this device will be recognized as a device that's allowed onto the fabric. Looking at the top, look at the two CSRs that I've already done this with. Once onboarded, the vManage actually issues a software serial number to the device, and the token becomes useless. If there were any physical gear attached to this lab, the serial number would be part of the provisioning file also, and it would be a real serial number on the device. In this case, I've already provisioned devices onto the fabric, but I can show you the process by which we would request the token be matched so that we could do onboarding. Let's log into one of our virtual routers, WAN edges, and just look at the process. If this device had not yet been onboarded and was new, it wouldn't have a, a chassis ID or a token defined. And so what we would do is do a request, and this request command does differ between iOS XE and vEdge. But in this case, we would request platform software SD-WAN vEdge Cloud, and this is just a holdover from the vEdge cloud itself. They just integrated this command the same way. And then we would specify a chassis ID, or, sorry, uh, we would say activate and specify a chassis ID. The chassis number would need to match what is in the device list. 
So in this case, of course, I'm not really going to do it, so I can specify anything at all. CSR 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the next thing would be to specify the token, which again is part of the vManage. We saw it just a minute ago. And we would specify the token, you know. And at this point, we would just hit enter. And that would set this virtual device to use that chassis number and token when it attempts to onboard to the fabric. So now that we have our organization, our whitelist, and our digital certificates, our zero trust model should be unlocked and all of the devices should be able to trust each other. Now how do we use these things to ensure that our fabric is secure? Well, once the details have all been configured in vManage and all the digital certificates have been installed and the whitelist is updated, the organization is correct on all the devices. The vManage will pass the details to the orchestration plane that begins and ends with the vBond. After onboarding the controllers to the vManage, including the vBond itself, the vBond will maintain a list of valid WAN edges and controllers along with the connection information for each to help set up those connections. Think of the vBond as a combination bouncer tour guide. VBond knows what guests are invited to the party and offers each guest the details of how to reach each other. It also records the connection details of WAN edge routers as they connect in order to pass that information on to the controllers and to vSmart specifically who will hand out connection details according to the topology policy in order to build the fabric. Let's step through that WAN edge onboarding process. Before the WAN edge can onboard, the control tunnels must be up between the controllers themselves. This is done as part of the SD-WAN fabric bring up process when the vManage imports the vSmart and vBond controllers. The vManage needs to build DTLS tunnels to all of the controllers, and the controllers will have to build DTLS tunnels to each other. vManage and vBond have to establish a tunnel together so that vBond can get the whitelist from vManage and so that vBond can inform vManage when WAN edges try to connect. vSmart and in fact all devices are only configured with the vBond address and so to build a control plane tunnel to vManage it must first contact the vBond. vBond and vSmart need to build a tunnel to each other so that vBond can let vSmart know about WAN edge connections and how to build the DTLS control plane tunnels to those WAN edges. vSmart is the policy engine for the SD-WAN fabric. Remember that the controllers will cross-authenticate each other based on the organization and the digital certificate. Now let's see what happens when a WAN edge tries to onboard into the fabric. The first thing is that the WAN edge will build a connection to the vBond in order to authenticate itself. It provides its digital certificate, which includes its organization and its canonical name and the serial number, and this will be checked against vBond's whitelist. Assuming that all goes well, vBond will allow it onto the fabric and also inform it of how to connect to vSmart and vManage and establish the control plane tunnels to, to those two controllers. At the same time, it will inform vManage and vSmart about the details of the WANEDGE connectivity to facilitate that control plane tunnel setup. Once the WANEDGE has communicated with vBond and received the information about vManage and vSmart, it drops the connection to vBond and will set up permanent tunnels to vManage and vSmart to receive configuration and policy. Now, as I mentioned, vSmart is the policy engine and control plane of the Viptela SD-WAN fabric. Because of this, it keeps permanent DTLS tunnels up with vManage to receive policy updates, and also with vBond to facilitate control plane DTLS tunnel setup with WAN edges. vSmart is where all the routing adjacencies and route exchange of the fabric takes place. Rather than having a full mesh of neighbors, all WAN edges in the fabric peer with the vSmart, and based on those active policies, the vSmart will reflect the routes it learns across the fabric to other WAN edges. 
For those familiar with BGP, vSmart basically functions as a route reflector. vSmart also enforces the fabric topology by reflecting the connectivity information per the policy. By default, the vSmart simply reflects all connectivity information, called TLOCs, to every other WAN Edge router. When topology policy is being enforced, vSmart uses that policy to control how connectivity information is shared and thus what data plane tunnels can be formed. We'll have to talk about policy another time. It's a huge topic. For now, just understand that policy is created on vManage and sent to vSmart over those control plane tunnels. Because vSmart keeps con constant connectivity to the WAN edges with those control plane tunnels, it can update the routing and topology policy across the fabric in a quick, scalable way. In our next video, let's focus more on the WAN edges themselves and the different ways we can onboard them to the SD-WAN fabric and install certificates. I hope this has been helpful in your learning journey. See you next time.